in the waters of baptism, Carmel died with Christ and rose with him in new life, may she now share with him eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I welcome you all here today as we gather to say farewell to Carmel. Carmel has reached the end of one stage of life, and now she goes on to the later stage of life in heaven and life in eternity. For us, parting is never easy. And in these strange times in which we live, parting is even more difficult. I know that there are so many people who would like to be here with us in the church today as we celebrate this Mass for Carmel. But because of illness or distance or the pandemic restrictions under which we live, it's not possible for them to be here. Many are able to join us via the web stream, the live stream, and we welcome you. And I know that your praying with us for Carmel today is very much appreciated. Today we ask the Lord to comfort all Carmel's relations and friends, especially her husband Jerry, who is in Kilbrew, and to be keeping our prayers today too. 
her sons, Brian, Michael in England, and David, her grandchildren, Stephen, Robert, Dominic, Alex, and Joe, her daughters-in-law, Maura and Anne, her brother, Father Michael, her brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, nieces, Karma lived in this world as a child of light, and she radiated her light to all. Now that she has completed her earthly journey, she makes her way to join with her parents, John and Anne, her sisters Maureen and Teresa, and she will meet the Lord who is light from light. We're beginning our ceremony today by bringing forth a few symbols to the table here at the font some items that symbolise Carmel's life and her interests. And so first of all, now we're going to bring forward one of her puzzle books. So bring the puzzle book first. There you go. And Carmel was an avid reader and loved to do the crosswords and puzzles and she read the papers every day and enjoyed all the challenges of the crosswords. So now we're going to bring up a pot of jam, representing her love of cooking and baking and jam making. She loved presenting her wonderful dishes to her family and friends, and she'll be enjoying now the Feast of Heaven that's prophesied in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah today. And symbolizing her love of the garden and gardening, Carmel really loved pottering about in the garden, and so we're bringing the trowel and the shovel. And these are just a few symbols of the character and the life that Carmel had. Each of you will have your own particular memories to bring before the Lord today. As I mentioned, we're joined by people via the live stream and one of those is Father Michael, who I hope is able to receive us in South Africa. And we hope you're receiving the message well, and we have received your message too, which I'm going to read out for people here. So Brian, Michael and David, God has come to visit his people. God has come to visit your family. He has taken your mother, my sister Carmel to himself. Naturally, there is deep sadness at her leaving us, but there are also other positive feelings together with our sadness. You're mourning the death of your mother and I am mourning the death of my sister. We are very much aware that the quality of life that she experienced in recent times, especially since the onset of COVID-19 pandemic, was not easy for her and it was difficult for all who are close to her to see her struggle with her pain and feeling helpless to really relieve her suffering. There is relief that her suffering has come to an end, but that relief does not negate our sense of loss. We believe that God's visitation is to take her to her eternal home. We're also very much aware that her home here on earth not only the one in Fairways Lawns, but each home that she created for her family was her kingdom. Her eternal home is her real home. Not only where everything is in its proper place, and there's no speck of dust or dirt any place, and especially no spiders lurking in the hidden corners. It is her home where she's enjoying that peace which the Lord promised us, a peace the world cannot give, she is at peace with her God, with herself, and with all her loved ones, and even those who may not have loved her. Jesus told his loved ones, there are many rooms in my father's house. I go to prepare a place for you. God's visitation on the morning of March 18th was to take her to that home which his son has prepared for her. And this is my greatest consolation at this time. Our sadness and sense of loss is more than compensated for by the certainty that she is finally in her true home with her family and her loved ones who have gone before her. Carmel, 
enjoy and rest in that peace which, for which you have always longed. Your loving brother, Michael. I know that sums up the sentiments of all of us here today as we have to say farewell to Carmel. We wish her well and peace in God's kingdom. And for a few moments we place ourselves in the presence of the Lord who gathers us around his table. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that, by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Carmel to be inscribed in the Book of Life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. And please be seated now as we have our readings. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all the nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from each, from every cheek He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up into the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emos, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognising him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in our sight of, in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem, 
There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road, and how they had recognised him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Late in the day, after a journey with a heartwarming stranger, two disciples sit at a table in Emmaus. Our readings today proclaim the death and resurrection of Jesus, and they remind us that Christ is visible everywhere to the eyes of faith, in the sacred places of worship, along the busy roads of life, in all our breaking and our making whole again, and even in a death with the eyes of faith, even in death we can encounter the Lord. As Father Michael described, death is one of those times when we feel God more closely, when God visits us. The story of Jesus appearing to the disciples on the road to Emmaus is one of the most beloved of all the stories of the New Testament. And it's a story that has a lot to say to us as we gather here this morning to say farewell to Carmel. The two disciples are in a similar situation to all those who grieve the loss of a loved one. You find them on the road to Emmaus, leaving Jerusalem where Jesus, their friend, died and was buried. They had followed Jesus. They had put their hope in him, but he died. There's talk of him having risen, but these two don't know what to think. And they obviously weren't convinced. Their lives were turned upside down, and so they're leaving Jerusalem, leaving that part of their lives behind him where they had journeyed with Jesus, off to Emmaus to escape it all, and maybe to put it all in the past. But the death of a friend does that to all of us. When we lose someone close to us, no matter how sudden or how long expected, how peaceful or how tragic, our world gets turned upside down for a while. Jesus appears on the road on the way to Emmaus as he appears on our road today. Storytelling was a very important part of Jesus' ministry. We all know stories that he told, the story of the Good Samaritan, the lost sheep, the prodigal son. But in today's gospel, it's not Jesus that's telling the story, it's rather the disciples. And when Jesus appears, they start going over it all again. And he encourages them to tell the story. You must be the only one who does not know the things that have been happening these last few days. What things? asked Jesus. And when their story is told, Jesus explains it all. And this too is something that we associate with today as we celebrate Carmel's life. We've been going back over the memories and the stories, telling them and retelling them. And especially for Brian and Michael and David, there's so much for you to reflect on. We recall the cooking and the baking, the jam making, her love of reading and puzzles and the gardening. And there are so many other memories that are personal to you. Her love of Jerry and the care that she showed him in his illness. And all over the years being there for you in good times and in challenging times. We remember and give thanks for her love and her exceptional generosity. And this is something that the Lord encourages us to do to remember karma with fondness and love, and to remember too that the Lord visits us at this time. The Lord comes to explain to us that death isn't the end, that there is a life after death, and that there is an enduring love, and that there is hope. And that we can be sure that Carmel, who entertained this hope throughout her life, will now see its fulfillment in eternity. This is the real wisdom that's imparted in the scriptures that we heard today. The mourning veil and the shroud will be removed. The tears will be wiped away. And we will be fed 
at the Lord's table, God will bring us with him. And this is the wisdom that was Carmel's strength, the source of her focus and determination throughout life, that made her the person that she was and that gave her the values that she had. It's not surprising that her children and her grandchildren, her brother, would speak so highly of a mother, grandmother and sister who was such a great friend. Her single-mindedness, the keeping of the standards, the support and encouragement she gave to her family, to her neighbours and friends, was so much appreciated. And that's why we're sad to have to say farewell. A few years ago, when I was in another parish, after a Mass one day, the altar server started asking me questions about heaven and the afterlife. I asked them what they thought heaven would be like. And there was a little girl, she was about nine years old, and she said that she believed the afterlife would be somewhere where you could eat loads of chocolate. And I asked her if she liked chocolate, and she said she did. Well, I said, in heaven you can eat chocolate all day and never get sick. And her eyes lit up. And then I thought, well, no, actually. You know the way you feel now when you're eating chocolate? Oh, yes, she said with a big smile. Well, that's the way you'll feel all the time and you won't have to eat chocolate at all. And what she said then was lovely. She said, well, if that's the way, why is it that people are so sad when somebody dies? In so many places in the scriptures, Jesus reassures us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. I am the resurrection and the life. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. Come, blessed of the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Carmel makes her way towards the eternal home today and it's the parting that makes us sad. But as our faith strengthens, may our sadden lessen, and may we always be aware of the presence of the Lord who accompanies us as he accompanies Carmel now to her well-earned inheritance. May the risen Lord, who we'll be celebrating at Easter, and who is just as present with us today, make our hearts burn within us, that we will recognise him today in our breaking of the bread, and also on every other road of life on which he is to be found. And until we meet Carmel again, we pray for her. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. I invite you to stand now for the prayers of the faithful. And let us pray with confidence and trust in the power of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and whose promise is that one day we shall be like him. We give thanks to Karma for the life she led, for the precious memories she gave and for the good she did for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends, that they enjoy the light of heaven and the company of saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our husband, Jerry, her brother, Father Michael, her son, Michael, and family, and for all our friends and relatives who could not be here with us today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of Carmel's exceptionally wonderful friends and neighbors, who have shown such great kindness, friendship, and support over the years. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who cared for Carmel and Jerry, their doctors, community health workers, their pharmacist, and especially Celia and Pam, who cared for them in their home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the staff in Kilbrew Nursing Home, for the care and kindness they showed to Carmel over the last few months. 
we would also like to thank them for their continuing care of Jerry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who continue to work tirelessly during this COVID pandemic, especially those working in Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, whose days are without end and whose mercies are beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is short and the hour of death unknown. Let your spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, that we may serve you in union with the whole church, sure in faith, strong in hope, perfect in love. And when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live for ever and ever. Amen. And please be seated now. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Carmel, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise, as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Carmel, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. And please stand now. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As you know, if you are of the one household, you can shake hands as a sign of peace, but otherwise might just bow to each other and wish that peace in our hearts. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Carmel may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Carmel, and now we come to the last farewell. There's sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Carmel again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. And therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. response to the song of farewell is receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of, Ab of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Carmel in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Carmel in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister Carmel forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs>